Hello everyone, it's Carrie from sunshineinmypocket.com. Today I'm going to show you how to stamp on fabric and we're going to make three cards using this sleigh ride stamp from Maker Forte. Now I do have to mention that this set is actually a white rubber stamp set. When you order it, that's what you'll get. I got a preview of this set. So I am using this one here that is the clear stamp. But I just wanted to clarify that the stamp in the Maker Forte shop is white rubber. So I have some muslin here and I have this red burlap bag and I wanted to make a little Christmas gift bag with this. So I'm gonna stamp on this muslin and I'm going to do a no sew project. I have some heat and bond that's the ultra hold and I'm going to cut this the same size as the muslin and this size will fit that stamp perfectly. So I'm just gonna open this up <laughs> and cut this out just with a regular pair of scissors. So I have the fabric cut and I have the heat and bond cut and now I'm gonna go ahead and iron that heat and bond to the back of the muslin and that'll make it nice and sturdy for stamping on. Put the rough side of the heat and bond onto the fabric and then just iron it together. So I did this with my iron off screen because my iron's all the way in the other room, but all you do is just iron it on, hold it there for a little bit, and you get a perfect heated muslin piece. I am testing out my favorite black ink. This is the Remarkable Eclipse Black Ink from Maker Forte, and look how beautiful it stamps on fabric. Now, I wanted to try this out because this is my favorite black ink of all time. You can Copic color with it, you can watercolor with it, you can stamp images with it, you can even stamp crisp sentiments with it. It is perfect, and I wanted to know if it could stamp on fabric as well. And I was so pleasantly surprised to see that yes, you can, absolutely you can, and it turned out great. Now, I just wanted to mention that I'm not gonna be washing this piece. I don't know how it will turn out if you try to wash it. I'm not planning on that ever, so for my purposes, this works out great. You may have to test it if you're going to use it on an item that will be washed or put through the washing machine. So just also wanted to mention that this is a piece that is just going to be used for decor. I'm going to stamp this two or three times here on the muslin and I love that the muslin is kind of peeling in parts and I'm getting a little bit of a rustic vibe. The stamp is stamping so beautifully on this muslin. I'm getting some lights and darks so it gives it a more of a rustic feeling. It's really, really cool. This turned out better than I expected and look how happy I am with this. Now, also one thing I wanna mention is when you do this with the white rubber stamp, you're gonna probably get a more crisp, clear result on this, but I was just so happy. <laughs> I, I love it. I love how this is turning out. This is one of my favorite stamps. Now, to put it onto the muslin bag, or the burlap bag, excuse me, all you do is you peel off that backing and I'm going to put a piece of regular copy paper inside the bag so that it doesn't accidentally iron this bag closed. I didn't think it would go all the way through, but just in case, I'm gonna do that and it also gives me a little more sturdiness as I iron that on. I'm gonna set that aside for a little while to allow the ink to fully dry and the iron to heat up again. Now while the iron is reheating up so I can iron that on, I'm gonna start making our cards. And I'm starting out with the Everglades ink. This is a beautiful dark, dark green ink from Maker Forte. And look at that beautiful impression that we get with that one. So I'm gonna clean it off and I'm gonna stamp it with a lighter green now, which is Pop Art. One of my favorite inks in their, in their neon line. This Pop Art is such a pretty color. It's a lighter green, much lighter. But also if you have their Palm Tree ink, I think that would be a really beautiful green to use for this. But these are the two that I had at the time to use. And so that, look, look at the difference. A lighter green and a darker green, really, really pretty. So now I'm just gonna cut these down just 
to go around the whole outline. And now I have two different colors of red cardstock. This one is kind of a, well, it's got a metallic to it. It's that red metallic. And then I have the roller skates cardstock that is a beautiful, bright tomato red, kind of an orangey tone underneath. So it works well with this pop art color. And then I'm going to cut down some dark green paper as well. That's going to be a thicker border around there. And then I found some beautiful, beautiful green glitter paper. I have no idea where this glitter paper came from. I just had it in my stash. So I'm going to use that for the dark green. And then I wanted to add a little more of a design to this green background for the sleigh rides of the lighter green. So I'm using this set here and I'm going to just use the Christmas tree to stamp out around that British racing green paper. All I'm using here is clear sticky ink and I'm going to re-ink this so I get a really nice dark impression and this is just going to make the cardstock appear darker in the areas where I stamp it. I like to re-ink it this way. I do it one layer each direction and then I spread it around with a, a piece of cardstock. I let that sit for just a minute and then it's ready to stamp. So see, I'm just going to stamp around the border because that's really where you're going to be able to see this. And then I'll place this right over the top. It's hard to see in the video, but you could also heat emboss it if you wanted to. Uh, you could do clear or you could do a gold metallic heat embossing. I decided just to leave it the clear ink so that it left that darker watermark. I'm using some fun foam scraps to really pop up this part of this card. So it gives it a lot of dimension and that looks really, really cool. I'm gonna do the same thing for the glitter one, add some green fun foam and glue it right down. Now this one's gonna to need to sit a little bit longer so that it can be sure to stick to that glitter cardstock. So there's the beginnings of our cards. I'm just gonna make the card base now by cutting this to seven inches by six, and then I'll score it at the three and a half mark. So these are kind of like a slimline card size. And now I have gone and ironed on that piece to the burlap bag. It worked out beautifully. I'm gonna add some C's peanut brittle in here. I would have added C's candies chocolates, but I'm mailing this from Arizona to Florida <laughs> and it's still kind of warm. So I thought the chocolates would completely melt by the time I got there. I still wanted to do something C's though. I love C's candies. My dad loves C's candies. And so I always get that in his honor. So adding some peanut brittle, a little green bow, and then I'm gonna add a tag. I was gonna use that Merry Christmas to the right that has the snowflake on it, which I love that by the way. I'll link that also below, but I instead decided to use a different one and I'll show you that in the end. But I'm going to put a hole in this with my Japanese screw punch. This allows me to punch through anything and multiple layers of cardstock with ease and even this really small, small hole so that I could just tie it with some baker's twine. And look how cute that is. But I will show you what I ended up using at the end. And it, it's also very, very cute. So there's our burlap stamped bag and here's our cards. And now I'm just gonna finish the last card to share with you using the same stamp set. And this time I wanted it in red glitter. <laughs> I've got a couple different red glitter embossing powders. Yes, I do. And one of them's from Michael's. This other one I got from a craft fair many, many years ago. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the one from Michael's. I'm gonna use my Versamark ink for this. And then I will stamp that out and add the red glitter embossing powder. Just heat setting that here with my heat gun. And now it is time to cut this down and make it look like a ticket. I thought this would be like cool, like a ticket to ride, you know? So I have a one inch punch and I'm gonna punch out the corners to give it that ticket look. And then I'll cut this down just a little bit more so that it has less around the edges. So this is kind of a fun little trick to make 
uh, make your card look like you've got a ticket for the sleigh ride. Now I have the Tim Holtz Distressor. I'm not sure if that's really what it's called, but it kind of roughs up your paper on the edges. And I thought that was a really great look for making it look like it was a torn ticket, torn off the edges. You know how they come in those big rolls and you tear the tickets off? So I'm using that to give that a rough edge there and now it's ready to put onto my card. I'm going to add it to a red card panel, but this time I wanted it to have more of a design. So I'm using this Damask Love stamp set. This one was designed by Eileen Hull and I love it. I'm using it for all the things. So I'm going to heat emboss that with clear. And you can see I'm running low on my clear embossing powder. Time to get some more of that. It only stamps a portion of this, but once I heat set this first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and move that cardstock down just a touch and stamp it once again and heat emboss the other side. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Just putting it back in my Misty, my stamp is still in there, and I'm gonna line it up just so the stamp covers the rest of that. Now where this meets, it's not gonna be a perfect line up there. There's gonna be a little bit of a, an edge, but it doesn't really matter because our ticket to ride is going to cover that completely up. So I just wanted the heat embossing to go all the way across the entire panel, and now I'm gonna put that on at an angle. So this is going to be a little bit different, and I'll add some fun foam to this one too to have it pop up, and it also gives it a little more stability. To add the fun foam, I, I use some score tape, and then I use liquid adhesive to add the fun foam directly to the panel. And then I'll just add a few gems, and that is this card. To finish it off, I'm using a gray marker to add a few little dots to the edges so it looks even more like a torn ticket. And there is that card. So here's all the cards and our burlap bag that we made together today. These are really super fun. I hope you enjoyed this process and learning how to iron on a muslin piece to your decorative bags. Let me show you at the end. This is the tag I ended up going with. It is something that I made with the Hedgehog Hollow Kit from last month. And I'm just gonna add a to and a from to the back. Now this peppermint twist is very glittery. I use some, some glitter for the white portion. So in real life, it really glitters and shines. It's so pretty. And here's what I did for the back. I just die cut a circle, just very simple, something that would fit back there. And this is where I can write my to and from. And then I'll just glue that right on the tag. So there's our finished piece right there, just adding that right back to the, to the tag. And that's it, very, very simple. There you go. And that size is a little better for this bag as well. I love how this turned out. I hope you loved it too. Look at all those little extra threads hanging off the edges. So, so cool. So there you go. There's our process for all of these today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help with YouTube. And I hope you'll subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. I'll be back real soon with more card making inspiration. Lots of things to still make before the holidays. And I don't know about you, but I haven't even started making my Christmas cards yet. <laughs> Let me know if you have in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.